Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to go over a cool little app from Microsoft called PC Manager. And now this little tool is used to clean up your PC and make it run better. So uh, if you're a pro uh, and you're used to doing things manually, this is still pretty helpful. If you're not a pro and you know how to use little uh, utilities like CCleaner or other PC optimization tools, this is still pretty cool. And if you don't know anything at all, and you just know your machine is running badly, this is a very helpful little tool. Now let's be clear, this thing mostly does things that your Windows 11 and Windows 10 computer already do. The features are already buried somewhere in the operating system, but you can't find them. This brings them together, and beyond that, it actually has a number of additional features that you will find useful. So let's download it and explain it as we go. Now you can download it from the Microsoft Store, or you can download it directly just by doing a search, PC Manager Download, there we go. And in my case, it's the first hit on Google, download. Now, hey, because it's from Microsoft, it's not going to have adware, it's not going to be malicious, it's not going to load garbage in the background. Something you won't expect if you're a tech like I am is that it runs on some Windows servers. So I have actually installed it on Windows Server 2025. So the only thing I don't like about this is that it says, look, why don't we reset everything back to factory? No, don't like that. As you can see here, I don't like the Windows 11 toolbar being in the center and expanding. And I don't like where things are combined. So I want my stuff left the way it is. I have it tuned the way I like. If you're not happy with your uh, setup because you've been tinkering with it, leave that checkbox on. And boom, we're here. Boost is an Omni button that cleans up everything right away. What you'll see is that my memory usage will drop. My temporary files will go down to almost zero. You might think, well, temporary files, what do I care about those? Look, when a program terminates, when a program closes, it should clean itself up and it shouldn't leave anything behind. But it, they often do. Boost will clean it up. It will also terminate programs that are running in the background that you're not using. So if you installed Zoom 100 years ago and you no longer use it all the time, it will terminate it. So that means if you need Zoom in the future, you'll just need to start it up. It will not get rid of it permanently. It will not uninstall it, and it will not stop it from starting up again uh, at your next login. What it will do is just turn it off now. So let's give it a try. Boost. Dump my temp files. Now, one of the things I was worried about was that it would delete my downloaded files because I have a ton of stuff in downloaded files. I, it doesn't actually. And you'll see here that now that it's run boost once, it says you've got a lot of other temporary files. You should use deep clean. Okay, well, we'll get to that. When this is done, we will go through and show you the stuff it doesn't do in case you want to do some more yourself. Let's go to health check. Because we already ran boost, this is pretty much cleared out. Let's go to processes. Now, this is telling us what's running in the background. This is just the same as task manager. So we could say, you know what? I don't need this WebEx uh, software running right now. And you might think, wasn't Boost supposed to take care of that? It has to be a long period of time that you have not used the software. So if you've started this up something and you want to see if Boost will kill it, it won't. Let's go to startup. And these are the things that are starting up automatically. And you can see that Microsoft is saying these things probably need to be on. These other things probably don't need to be on. And you can decide whether they should be or not. I actually need all of these. And if you don't recognize something, turn it off. Uh, you can always just go back and then turn it on. If it turns out that you need it. Let's go back to home. Let's go to disk cleanup because this is interesting. So in here you can see uh, we have a lot of items that it thinks it can clear up. System dump file. So every time a uh, computer crashes or has a serious problem, it will create a DMP file, a dump file. And if you report that to Microsoft, the dump file can go with it if you choose to. And that gives Microsoft the information that they need to fix Windows so it doesn't happen to everybody else in the future, or you for that matter. But those dump files are pointless after they've been submitted to Microsoft, so get rid of them. All of this other stuff is just stuff that you don't need to have. I'm going to delete them all. Application items, let's look through here. It handles Edge, Microsoft Edge, Chrome, and Firefox, because those are the three that I have installed here. If I had Opera as an example, it would have Opera in here. Okay, let's go down and look at other things to get rid of. Uh, do we need to keep the recovery logs? No. Do we need to keep widgets? I don't even use widgets, so no. If you don't know what these things are, get rid of it. 
prefetch details. Don't care. And if you're confused as to what they are, just put your mouse over the little eye and it'll tell you something about it. Let's keep going down. These are apps that have various, yeah, updates, the things that we just don't need to keep anymore. So let's clear that junk out. System trace files. You don't probably know what that is. Get rid of them. One thing to note is that this will delete your recycle bin. So if you're in a, say, a family computer and you've got lots of different people that use it and they have their own profiles, it will not delete theirs. It'll only delete yours. When I say delete, I mean empty. So we just got eight gig of disk space back. That's a good thing. Okay, let's go back to home. So we've been through all of this. Let's go through uh, protection. You're looking at yours and you see it says some other antivirus here, Norton or McCaff or whatever. That's because that's what's on your computer. Let's go to Windows Update. It says, hey, you know, you do have some updates waiting. You should run these. I can uh, select update right now, but I don't want to because I don't want to affect this video. But as soon as I'm done, I'm going to run an update. Let's go back to protection. Default browser settings. If your browser isn't running the way you want, go into that and play with it. Taskbar repair. This is one of those utilities that is not built into Windows. This is an additional tool that came with PC Manager. You can set everything back to factory and it can do a, a repair. And again, you might think, well, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, but I can tell you lots of people do. Move on from there. Restore default apps. What are the default apps? These are ones there you can see I've already set. Pop-up management. So this is more than just your browser pop-ups. This involves pop-ups for things like, uh, down at the bottom right-hand corner, system notifications, alerts from your VPN, alerts from your antivirus product. So do I want to allow, allow advertising to pop up? I don't think so. No, I don't. Select on screen. Do you want us to ask you every time a pop-up appears if you want that pop-up to appear in the future? I'm going to say join. And we'll show you where you can turn that off in the future. So every time I get a pop-up, it's going to now ask me, do you want to see this again? Let's go to storage. Storage, deep cleanup. We've already done one, so it's not going to find very much. Large files. This is something that is not built into Windows that you only get with PC Manager. So let's click on it. And it's going to search for anything. And by default, it's over 10 meg, but you'll be able to set it in the top right hand corner here when it's done scanning. Now, I have large files, a lot of them, movies, executable files that I need to keep to reinstall software in the future. So for me, I know what my large files are and I want to keep them. In your case, most of them are probably junk. So if you see an MSI file or something that you don't need, MSI is Microsoft installer, something you downloaded in the past and it's already running, you can probably get rid of it. Let's click cancel and I'll show you. Yeah, oh, here we go. So this is looking for files that are over 10 megabytes in size. It's found my web server backups, a bunch of movies. Oh my God, so many things. And I need all of them, so I'm going to leave that. Duplicate files, also something that's not built into Windows 11. So let's click on that. And you can see here, it's going to do a check. I'm going to click cancel because I don't have time. Uh, but if you find duplicate compressed folders or videos or whatever else, feel free to delete them. They're probably junk. Storage Sense. This is built into Windows and it's just going to launch the Storage Sense app. Let's close that. Let's go to Apps. Processes that are running. These are things that are running right now. We already previewed this. We could kill any of this. I don't need the WebEx running right now. Startup apps we have already been over. Deep Uninstall. This is neat. So it uninstalls dead apps and removes leftovers from the registry. It does not do as good a job as CCleaner or other tools. Let's go back to apps. Microsoft Store. This just launches the store you don't care. Toolbox. So this is something that uh, a lot of people seem to like. I don't have much use for it. Let's turn it on. It'll pop open this little toolbar and it really only has two features that are useful to me. What most people like is that they can go into here and select add tools and they can add whatever buttons they want. So I can add weather app. There it is. I don't want any of that stuff. I just think it's junk. It's floating around. What this provides that you don't normally see is your upload speed and your download speed. And you might think, how is that calculating it? It's downloading a small file and uploading a small file periodically to estimate those numbers. Uh, and uh, that to me is just waste. I don't want it. The other thing that you get is this little status bubble that tells you what percentage of your resources, CPU, memory, so on and so forth, are in use. You can click on this and it will run boost. 
I don't want this, so I'm going to turn it off. You may want it, but I don't. Again, if I want, say, the snipping tool, I just click Start, type Snipping, right-click on it, and select Pin to Taskbar, and there it is. Restore is just Restore to set your computer back. Now, here is something useful. In Settings, you can enable a feature called Smart Boost, and what that will do is when your computer is getting maximum usage, and it is starting to get slow, this will clear out what it can automatically in the background. Kind of helpful, I'm gonna leave it off because I don't like anything happening automatically. For most home users, they will love it and you should turn it on. And these two settings I actually don't want to have on. I do not want it reminding me when there's an update in the Microsoft Store to a particular app. No thank you. And secondly, I don't want this notice about the downloaded doc. So if I download something, I don't want it popping up saying, hey, you have you, do you want to use it? Do you want to use it? No, I don't want that. Now, you might remember that we turned on the Microsoft PC Manager pop-up plan. And that is the feature that lets us select whether we want a pop-up, which usually appears in the bottom right-hand corner, to appear or not in the future. Yeah, I want to do that. If you have changed your mind, you don't want that to happen anymore, just turn that off. Feedback. If you have some thoughts on this or you have some problems, you can send it to Microsoft. And believe me, they care. They will analyze it. They will look at it. And especially if there are lots of other people with the same problem, they will fix it. So what's missing from a PC Manager for Microsoft? Well, really three things. One, it can't tell you that you should uninstall software that you're not using because that's Microsoft and they can't obviously knock the industry, they'll get sued. But if you've got something on your, on your computer you're not using, get rid of it. Go into apps and programs, just right click and select install apps and then uninstall anything that you've got that's junk. That's the first thing it, it's not doing. The second thing is it's not deleting all of the temporary files and it really should. You might think, well, just getting rid of what I've done is good enough. I don't think so. When you have a temporary file, it can cause problems with the usage of that program in the future. So here's a place that it, for instance, doesn't get rid of it. C users, your username, app data, local temp. Everything in here is junk. And you can see I've got 132 items. Actually, I had a lot more. I already deleted some stuff. But I just right click on them, select them, and then I can select to skip for anything that's actually in use that I actually do need. And right now I've got a lot of things running, so I do need that. And you can go into other users. I'll go into C, Users, User 1, App Data, Local, Temp. Okay, I've already cleaned this one. But you should do that for all of your users. It also doesn't empty everybody's recycle bin. And you probably want to do that. So click C, colon, backslash, and type in dollar recycle bin. And you go into here, select them all, delete them. And it will actually get recreated the next time a user logs in. So then you can go into your recycle bin, empty it, and off you go. Yes, I want to get rid of everything that's in here. There we go. That's handy. The last thing it doesn't do that's important is to get rid of any orphaned entries in the registry. So a registry cleaner like CCleaner is still helpful. So hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. We would super appreciate it. Uh, subscribe's also appreciated. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because on YouTube, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.